Kate, how do you use the automatic reordering system? I have to place my orders to the warehouse, and I just don't have the time for it. Bill, it will take a few minutes to set up, but then the process can be as simple as each store running a report and converting it to an order that is automatically printed in the warehouse. Tell me how you do it now. Okay, Kate, it's quite simple. First, I calculate the average sales over a period of time, let's say 15 days. Then I look at the number of items in stock, and compare the two to see how many more units I need in stock. I check it against the pending orders and order the difference. Do you consider category, or subcategory activity, or are you looking at everything on an item level? I look at it on an item level, but sometimes I don't run the reports and I can tell just by looking around what I need to order. Good thing inventory never gets misplaced, and that all shipments are open promptly around here. Good thing. Okay, Retail Cloud has three ways to set up automatic replenishment requests. You can use fixed method, the daily sales average or sales period to calculate your target levels. Using sales data for a predefined sales period, the target level will be calculated using the method select. The system will then make an allowance for any pending store and purchase orders, and calculate what the replenishment level should be. Does it consider the availability of the product in the warehouse? If the warehouse balance is above zero, it will generate the order for the required amount. If the warehouse balance is zero or a negative it will not display the item on the store order. That's good, so the warehouse does not have to spend time looking for something that is not in stock. How does it handle pending inventory transfers? This is where it gets tricky. It assumes that all pending transfers have been committed. If an item is en route and not in the store inventory yet, it will not consider it. This could result in overordering the product. Okay, we will have to make sure transfers are committed in a timely manner for this to work. Yes, you should. You may also want to activate the email alert for negative items so you can be sure your inventory levels are all accurate. Good idea. Is that in the wiki? Yes, it is. Kate, you said there were three methods to calculate target levels. Fixed method, daily sales average and sales period. Can you explain each of them? Bill, before I go through them, I want to let you know that you can set a default method for the enterprise, the region or venue. You can then modify it at a store level as needed. When fixed quantity is selected, whenever an item quantity falls below the minimum level setting specified, the item will be reordered. For example, if an item was set for a minimum level of 6 and a maximum level of 20, once the quantity on hand drops below that minimum level, the order report will recommend an order that is equal to the difference between the maximum and minimum level. The quantity will be ordered as a multiple of the lot size multiplier. Where are the minimum and maximum levels set? They are set in the master item screen. Is it the same for all business units? You can modify the numbers for warehouses venue and stores in the order level configuration screen on CAS. What do you mean by lot size multiplier? This pertains to store orders and it allows you to set a multiple that you want orders in for a specific item. So to recap, when I run the report, the system will look for items where the inventory level is below the minimum level entered at the item level or modified in the order settings. It then calculates the number I need based on a maximum minus minimum minus quantity on hand, minus open pending orders calculation, it then uses that as an order. Before it does that it also checks to see if the order is over the minimum order. And if it is the system then divides it by the lot size multiplier and rounds down. Okay I think I got that. Let's move on to daily sales average. Daily sales average is simple. In the order settings screen you would select a date range that you want to calculate the daily average for and then select the number of days of stock you want to have. The system would then calculate what items you need to replenish, and compare the shortage to the daily quantity and display it in the order report. And it would have the same considerations for minimum order and lot size multiplier and warehouse availability as you described earlier. Yes it would Bill. What happens if I want to use a rolling 15 day period? Do I have to reconfigure the settings each time? No. You can reset the settings at the report level, you just will not be able to change methods without reconfiguring the setting, but, if you were using the rolling period that consisted of the last 15 days, you should use the sales period method. Okay but if I wanted to use last weekend, and specify the dates, 
I could just do that on the screen when running the order report. Yes, that is correct. How about sales period? If you select sales period, you will have to specify the number of days for which you want the system to calculate your required inventory levels. This is a rolling period. Thanks, Kate. I think I got it. How did you figure it all out? Is it all in the wiki? Yes, it is. One more question. How do I set up the orders to print at the warehouse? You will need to modify your warehouse and add the printer information. Once you do that, whenever you select print from the store order screen, it will print the order in the warehouse. Thanks, Kate. I am going to go try it now. Bye, Bill.